Hey guys, so I'm going to be going over a few stuff that we kind of did right before break um, to kind of refresh our memory. So for this video, just so we're clear, I'm only going to be going over the first side of the first page. So that's looking at problems 1 through 10. The next video that I make, I'm going to be focusing on the next 10 problems and then the next video will be the next 10. Um, I'm just kind of breaking them up like that to kind of take them slow and for you guys to kind of work little by little and not feel overwhelmed um, but we still have to continue learning um, I will let you know which ones to kind of work on your own I did provide a key for you so that you guys can check your answers at the end but like I really need you guys to try it on your own and kind of you know learn from it I know this is different um, I will be doing maybe like four examples for this first one where I'm gonna you know do those and help you out step by step explaining it and refreshing our memory and then we'll go from there um so let's go ahead and get started i went ahead and include this for every slide as well as um the beginning uh, i want you to really focus on this because it's going to help you so when you're solving these uh quadratic equations i really want you to um focus on setting everything equal to zero Combine like terms if needed. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you do. Make sure that it's in standard form. So if you have to rearrange things, that's fine. But just make sure you have... Your... Oh, sorry. Pause. Okay. Sorry about that. Random phone call. Anyways. Um, so let's go back to these two methods. Remember, factoring method, um, you have to check these lists to see if there's anything that you can do. So for the first one, you have a perfect square minus a perfect square. That's really important. It has to be subtraction. Number two, look for a GCF. This can be a number or a variable. Um, number three, when you have it in the form of a trinomial, check to see if your A is equal to 1. When it's equal to 1, that's the best one. It's the easiest one. Um, if your A is greater than 1, then you're going to have to multiply and then divide Remember, can, uh, simplify your fractions, cancel out your fractions. And then if A is less than 1, um, we kind of worked on those a little bit, not too much before you guys left, but whenever you have a negative A term, you have to factor out that negative out of it, okay? Um, and we'll go over examples like that eventually. So the second method that we learned was square root method. So we had AX squared plus C. Notice how there is no BX term. Anytime the BX term is missing, then that means you could do square root method. However, you don't always want to rely on that one because sometimes, I don't know, maybe like perfect square minus a perfect square is better, this one. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, you're going to isolate your x squared, solve for x, and make sure to simplify those square roots. I gave you a key at the end, like I said, you can check, but you really need to work on simplifying square roots on your own, um, especially for next year. Then you're going to have uh, where your answer is always going to be set as a plus or minus. If you forget that, uh, it is wrong. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, so now let's go ahead and go on to the next ones. I'm going to be starting with number two. Number one is way easier, which is why I didn't even want to bother looking at that one. So you guys will focus on doing number one on your own. I'm going to go ahead and do two and three with you so that you guys can kind of get a feel for these. So the first thing I want to look at is it tells me to make sure that everything is equal to zero, combined like terms if needed. So looking at number one, or sorry, number two, everything is equal to zero. And there is no like terms that I need to combine, okay? So now that that's done, I'm going to look to see which method am I going to use. Now, square root method is when there's no BX term. Clearly, there is a BX term here. It's 84M. So I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually going to be using my factoring method techniques that we learned. So number one, none of these are a perfect square minus a perfect square. So I can't do that. Number two, the GCF. Remember, it can be a number or a variable or both. I should have put it put that as well. Um, knowing for this one, my GCF is actually a 7. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out that 7. To be left with m squared plus 12m plus 32 equal to 0. Okay, now that I factored out that 7, I took that 7 out. That means I look back at my trinomial. My a value is actually a 1. That's what I want. Now, how I got there is important because the reason I got it to 1 is because I factored out that 7. I never had to multiply these two which means that I don't have to divide. So I'm going to be kind of focusing on the a equals 1 method. So now I'm going to multiply my a times my c, these two. Um, that's going to give me 32. 
Now remember, it's a positive 32. I want to know what two numbers give me a positive 32 when I multiply them, but they add up to 12. That is going to be 4 and 8. So I'm going to be left with 7 again, because that's part of my factored form. Plus 4, because it has to be positive, And plus 8. Okay. Now that I factored everything completely, there's nothing that I can do. So I'm going to go ahead and start solving this. And I'm going to split this into three parts. Now hopefully we remember that 7 equal to 0, that's not possible. Therefore, that's not a solution. We have m plus 4 is equal to 0. You have to solve for m, which gives you m is equal to negative 4. Now hopefully this is looking a little bit more familiar that by the time you go on to these, it's a lot easier to do in your head like you were doing before. This one is just negative 8, okay? Because if you set it equal to 0, you subtract 8 from both sides, you're left with negative 8. So then your answer for this one would be negative 8. Oh, that's ugly. Let me rewrite that. It would be negative 8 and negative 4 as your two solutions. Remember, these are your zeros. This is where your graph would intersect on the x-axis if you were to graph this quadratic. Okay? So now let's move on to number 3. Number 3 has a little bit more going on. So looking at this one, set everything equal to 0 and combine like terms if needed. Right now, everything is equal to negative 6. So I can't leave it like that. I'm going to have to go ahead and add 6 to both sides. Now, this is where the combining like terms kicks in. Um, I have to add it to the 190. You cannot add it to this to any of these two terms here because they are not like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this with combining them. Now, you want to make sure that you always write it in standard form. It'll just make your life a lot easier. It just so happens that this is already in standard form. I just had to combine it. Now I'm left with 7n squared plus 77n plus 186 is equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and kind of see, okay, which method am I supposed to use from here? Factoring or square root? Now, hopefully we know that square root method you cannot use because, again, we have a bx term. Can't do that. So I'm going to look for factoring. Um, these are not perfect squares minus a perfect square, so skip that. Number 2, GCF. Luckily, I happen to have a GCF again. Go figure, it's number 7. So I'm going to take out 7 again. So we're going to be left with um, n squared plus 11n plus 28. So that's what I got so far. These are written so far apart. Let me rewrite that. Okay. So now that I have that, um, again, I look at my trinomial inside. This a is a 1. If I look here, that's a 1. The way I got there, again, is really important. Now, I got there by taking out a 7. I factored that out. I did not multiply 7 times 196. So because I factored out the 7, I it is not going to end up being a division like we've had in the past. So this one is an easy one again. I'm going to go ahead and um, multiply it. 1 times 28. Again, what gives me positive 28, but also gives me a positive 11 when you add them, that is 4 and 7. That's Multiply them, positive 28, add them, positive 11. You guys have to be real careful because I know before we left, you guys were messing up on your signs a lot. So n plus 4 and n plus 7. Okay? So again, I'm going to kind of solve for these. 7 is never equal to 0, therefore it's not a solution. This one's going to be negative 4 and negative 7. So both of my solutions here are negative 7 and negative 4. Again, these are my zeros. These are my um, x-intercepts. If I were to graph this on a graphing calculator, which you're more than welcome to, the zeros will actually intersect at negative 7 and negative 4. Okay? So <clears throat> right here, you might want to try some on your own. Um, you can pause the video, see if you can get a hang of some of them. If you don't want to and you'd rather just do the two other ones that I'm going to do with you, go for it. That's fine, but this would be a nice time to pause it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and keep going. So I'm going to erase this, move on to the next one. 6 and 8, these are the next ones I'm going to do. Okay. So first things first, set everything equal to 0, combine like terms if needed. Notice that it's equal to 7x, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7x. But I cannot subtract 7x from 10 or x squared. These are not like terms. But I do have to subtract it. What has to be moved. Now, when I rewrite this, I need to be very careful to make sure that it's rewritten in standard form. ax squared, the squaring has to be first, plus the bx, and followed by the constant, your c. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 7x plus 10. 
Again, the reason I did that is because I wanted it in standard form. I want this BX to be in the middle. I don't want to put it in the front. I don't want to put it in the end. So now that I have this, I'm going to kind of look at it again and see, okay, which method am I using? Clearly, square root is not able to be used because we have a BX term. I'm going to use factoring. This is not a perfect square minus a perfect square. However, um, if I check to see if there's a GCF, remember, it, when your A is equal to 1, you're never going to have a GCF. So you're not going to have anything to take out. So now look at number 3. You have your A equals 1, greater than 1, less than 1. This is already equal to 1, which means that you're just going to have to multiply A and C, so 1 and 10. You're going to have to figure out what times what gives you a positive 10, but it gives you a negative 7 when you add it. Now, 2 and 5 do give you a positive 10 um, when you multiply them. However, when you add them, it actually gives you a positive 7. So in order to fix that, I'm going to make both of these negative, which still gives me a positive 10, but it actually now gives me a negative 7 when I add them. So I'm going to rewrite this one as x minus 2, x minus 5. This is my factored form. I'm done. I can't factor it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and solve now. Erase that. Um, you're left with x equals 2 and x equals 5. So your answers are 2 and 5. Again, these are your zeros. This is where your um, graph, your quadratic would intersect. Your quadratic um, graph would intersect on a x and y, or sorry, the x-axis um, at 2 and 5. Okay, you, these are your two solutions. Um, and then number 8. This one looks like a lot going on, so I'm going to do this one for you guys. Um, so, let's take a look at that one. Okay, for number 8, remember you have to set everything equal to 0. Clearly, this is not 0. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms if needed. That's by moving stuff to the left. Now, I always like to move to the left. It's a lot easier for me to see. So, I'm going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides. Okay, now I can only add the a to the 32. Remember, those are like terms. This goes away. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2b squared. I can only take that away from 3b squared. And now I'm left with 13b still. Now, I have to subtract it, but there is nothing I can subtract it from over here. But it still has to be subtracted. Okay, these are gone. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative 13b on this side. Okay. There's nothing there, but you have to subtract it from, I guess, essentially zero. Now, before I rewrite this and combine like terms, I want to make sure that it's written in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to be left with just, and I'm going to change the color so it doesn't get lost. So I'm going to be left with 3b squared minus 2b. That is just 1b squared, okay? And then from there, I need to look at my bx term. This is my c. These are both c's. This is my b, my bx. So I'm going to go ahead and put minus 13b. There's nothing to combine it with besides 0, which means it's just negative 13b. That goes away. And then this turns into a positive 40. So now I've set it equal to 0 and combined like terms in the process. Now from here, I'm going to look to see, again, square root method I cannot use. Factoring method, I could. So I'm going to go ahead and look at these. And I'm going to see my a is equal to 1. That means I don't have to do anything. I don't have to turn it into 1. It's already a 1. Again, that means there is no GCF. Okay, we can't do any of these two. So I'm going to be looking over here. a equals 1. So we're left with a times your c. So a value times the c value. We're left with 40. Now, 8 and 5 give you 40. But when you add those, that actually gives you a positive 13. Remember, you want a negative 13. So I'm going to actually fix that again by putting them both negative. Now that doesn't always work. You have to be, you have to watch for your sign. So now I'm going to be left with B minus 8, B minus 5 is equal to 0. Solve. You're left with B is equal to positive 8 and B is equal to positive 5. So again, these are your two solutions on a graph. If you were to graph this, these are your zeros. This is where it would intersect the x-axis. Um, your solutions, your x-intercepts, okay? So that's it for this video. Um, go ahead and try the remaining questions that are left on 1 through 10. If you have any questions, look at the key, try and work backwards. If that doesn't work, send me a message on Remind, email me, reach out to me. Um, I don't know, post a comment, I guess. Yeah, anyways. All right, so I'll do the next video. If you guys feel ready to move on go for it if you don't do the next the next side tomorrow okay but do not procrastinate because i know you children all right
So, I'll talk to you guys later for the second video. Bye. How do I stop this?